evening, I welcome you as Berea celebrates its 40th anniversary. You heard right, 40 years, four decades. If that isn't something to be excited about, I don't know what is. 40 years of holding tightly to our Lord's unchanging hands. 40 years of learning and growing in Christ as a body of believers. 40 years of God guiding us through trials and giving us triumph. To our members, visiting friends, and those watching via YouTube, join us in the excitement of celebrating our Ruby anniversary with Christ as our guide. God has truly brought us a mighty long way. Welcome. I now invite Pastor Leonardo Ramming, exact Executive Secretary of the South Bahamas Conference, to bring greetings. Good evening, everyone. Come on, come on, you can do much better than that. Good evening, everyone. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. And if you're happy and you know it, say praise the Lord. Has God been good to you? God has been good to me. The Psalmist David declares, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be what? Glad. But he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And I believe that if ever a time we ought to be rejoicing and magnifying the name of God, it is now because God has granted you 40 years as the peace of God to be worshiping in this environment and rejoicing in the people of God. I bring you greetings this evening on behalf of our president, Pastor Kenny DeVoe, and his lovely wife, Sister Darlene, our treasurer, CFO, Elder Ukel DeMathis, and his wife, Sister Ali. And we want you to know that God is indeed an awesome God. And my wife and our daughter sends you their greetings also. And we are pleased to know that you have taken out this time to celebrate this milestone, our rejoicing in how you have come this far by faith. We are also honored to know that you are a part of the fellowship or the sisterhood of churches within the South Bahamas Conference. God has blessed you over these 40 years, and we want you to know that we love you and that we celebrate with you uh, as you commemorate these 40th, this 40th year. And so on behalf of our school, our principal, Sister Juliet Sands, and her administration, on behalf of the executive committee uh, of the South Bahamas Conference and all of the pastors who have uh, went, who have gone throughout this church, we want you to know that we love you, we appreciate you, we are thankful for the work that you are doing here in this area, in this part of the vineyard, and it's our prayer that God will indeed give you another 40 years by his power and by his might. Continue to advance by the grace of God and may God's blessing continue to be upon you. Thank you, Pastor Ramin. Coming right now with our LTIP, Sister Nottage, then followed by a special feature by Pastor Sims. Sorry, there won't be any L tip this evening, so let's move on to Pastor Sims. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back with you again for another night of our 40th year anniversary. And it's such a delight to be in your presence as we celebrate the goodness and the faithfulness of God. What do you say? And so tonight, for our special feature, we have a very special individual 
someone who I want to invite to the platform with me, one of the first founding babies of this here <laughs> institution. Put your hands together and welcome for me, Sister Chantel Miller. Amen, amen, amen. So, Sister Miller, I know you quite well. Uh, I want to just ask you a few questions and hopefully uh, you can uh, paint a picture for us as we go back through time. Take us now back to one of the earliest church services that you could remember. What did it look like? What were the people wearing? Uh, <laughs> what was the title of the sermon? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take us back and paint a picture of some what an early church service looked like in your remembrance. So church services. Mm. I don't really remember the early, early <laughs> services. I remember things about the early days, but the services I remember seeing in the wing unfinished. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Um I remember the services being very family oriented. Mm. I remember that. Um, I remember lots and lots of young people. Okay. Yeah. Being a part of it. Lots of babies being born. Hey. Lots and lots <laughs> of activities happening. So mm. some of the, the activities that I would remember. I remember us um going with the marriage club and family life. I don't know if you remember this. We went over to I don't remember the mommy was the hill. We went to way out Orange, not Orange Hill, Cabbage Street, no Orange Hill. So it was, there was a hill there mm. that we used to walk mm. up, and mm -hmm. we spent lots of Sabbath afternoons and Sundays there socializing. I remember, um, I remember being at Stokes Cabana, mm. but not the services. I remember us seeing there, spending time. I remember, you know, we remember the fun days. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember trips that Sister Beverly and the Pathfinders arranged for us to go to Orlando. I remember those. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, what else? Fun things. I remember. I remember things that children would remember. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. So back in the early days, and I remember the wing too, mm -hmm. and it wasn't finished, and everyone was tucked inside, but yeah. very close, yeah. closely tied together. Uh, so, so is. Is there a funny story that you could think of or a funny incident that jumps out to you? Yeah, yeah. So I have two. Okay, go The ahead. first one was before we were piled, before we were carpeted, well, we just got carpeted. So before yeah. we were tiled, we would <laughs> practice up here for rehearsals and whatnot um, with Carol and Sister Maggie leading out. Mm -hmm. And someone decided one day that they thought it would be cute to pull my chair from under me before I sat down on the hearts. I remember that. Very another safe. was Manasseh, but it was a boy. Mm -hmm. It was a boy who did that to me. And another thing that I remember was I remember when we had potluck. We, mm. used to, we would still be doing everything at the wing. Right. But things would be out here as we transition them into the ring, wing. Sister Martha would speak. <laughs> chicken <laughs> onto the compound to share with all the workers. I love so those it. are two things that I remember. Okay, okay. You didn't hear that, Mr. No, Secondary. <laughs> you gotta take that back to the office. But okay, that's amazing. You know, um, um and so with all of these things happening and as a, a young person growing up in the Berea Seventh day Adventist Church, uh can you tell us what was one of the biggest I guess, achievements you would have experienced the church uh, having while you, you know, were growing and observing the development of the church? I honestly think the biggest achievement would have been the way we were able to keep young mm. people in the church. Okay, um, okay. Beverly and those, they would have socials and other activities extending outside of the four walls to encourage the young people to stay in, to stay in, and and I that, that was my biggest, my big, my biggest, my, my most profound memory mm -hmm. of the church. That, along with the ministry of the then marriage club, the mm -hmm. marriage club, very impactful. 
um they traveled they traveled together they yeah. traveled and that traveling i think helped to bring um unity and camaraderie among the membership mm -hmm. and then it also strengthened the families and so it strengthened the church mm, yeah. wow that's amazing Iberia was so strongly family oriented and many products you yeah. know it came out of all of those strengthening efforts amen amen so uh, finally then, as we um, bring this section to a close, what message would you give to, you know, the current Berea members, those new and old, as we look forward to another 40 plus years? Um, I'm going to echo Sister Carol. I believe that um, we have to remember God. He is, he is the only reason why we're here. I'm here, and I could have been to any other church. We went to Abaco and we came back, and we came back because Berea is home. Berea is family, um, despite the challenges uh, that we see and experience, despite, despite losing many of our young people, the core family is still here. And as long as we continue to unite as a family, seeking God first in all that we do, we will be around for another 40 years, should God allow us to linger that long. Amen. Yeah. Let's put it together for Sister Miller. And thank you so much for sharing with us this evening. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Sims, for taking us down memory lane with Sister Miller. Right now, you can participate in the service because we're going to be collecting the offering. And this will be done by Brother Philip Ambrister, followed by a special prayer by Brother Don Kent. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening to say thank you for the many years of faithfulness among your people here at Berea. Father, we give thee thanks, we give thee praise. Father, we thank you, God, for the work that we have done, the work that you allow us to do. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be able to earn monetary funds of which we were able to give back, which thou was asked us to. Father, we thank you, O God, for allowing your people to be faithful in tithes and in offering. Father, this evening, as we come before you, we ask your tender mercies upon us and allow us to, O God, to return goodwill offering back to you, O God. Thank you, O God, for your faithfulness and your kindness towards us. Father, we thank you for your continuing mercies upon us. Father, we ask you to continue to bless us. And Father, tonight as we bring the offering to you, we ask you to let it be bountiful. Father, the work must be carried on. Father, thank you once again for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Mm-hmm. Let us pray. Gracious eternal Father, Lord, as we come before you this evening, we humble our hearts, our minds, to give you all the praise and the glory you deserve. Lord, you have guided us as a flock for 40 years father you have directed this church that we may be established in this community to be a light and lord i pray father that your holy spirit would move through each individual in this place tonight. And as we surrender to you, Lord, we are desiring to do your will. Search our hearts, O Lord. Try our reins, and if there be any wicked way, we're asking you, Father, to cleanse our hearts for more than righteousness. Father, we were guilty of not fulfilling your will in us. I pray that you put the desire in our hearts to be a witness for you. Each and every one of us, Lord, You know, Father, that we are weak, but you are strong. We ask that you, O oh God, that you, Father, would lead us and guide us, direct us in the way we should go. as you led Israel through the wilderness for 40 years, Lord. So you can lead us. You have led us for these 40 years. But I pray, God, that in moving forward, as we desire to reach the promised land, may our eyes look heavenward, for we seek a kingdom, God, that is not made with hands. And I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will fall upon each of us, that our hearts will be enlightened, that we, O oh God, will walk circumspectly before your face, redeeming the times because the days are evil. Lord, we have 
to be determined to let others know about your love, about your soon coming. May you put boldness in our hearts. May you give us the faith to overcome all of the circumstances and situations that we go through. Burn corruption out of us, God. And help us, Father. Help us, Lord. For we need you right now. We don't go to any other entity for help. We come to you. You said we have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask amiss. But Lord, we are asking for your presence right now. You say, seek, and you will find. Knock, and the doors will be open unto you. And Lord Jesus, for 40 years, we've been knocking. And now we're asking for you to open doors for this congregation, Lord. That many, many souls will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Father in heaven, you are great, you are mighty. Increase our faith, God. Give us your divine nature, Father, that we may grow thereby. And add to our faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge patience and to patience brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness self-control. Love for if we do these things, God, you said that we will never fall. So make our calling an election sure. And we want to thank you, God, for transforming us into your image that we may have your likeness. Sanctify our hearts, O oh God, and prepare us for when you should come or call. For these are the last days, Father. All the signs foretell. These funny weather patterns and all the rest of the stuff that's going on. Wars, rumors of wars. Perilous times are here. Open our dark understanding, God. And give us your wisdom. Put peace in our hearts. And may we love each other unconditionally. Caring for one another. Just as God, for Christ's sake, love each of us and forgive us. We know, God, that you can do so much more. If you're willing, God. You can use all of us. So let our hearts, O oh God, melt like wax before the fire and be, be determined to tell our sisters and our brothers about your soon coming. I pray, O oh God, that this service, Father, be a blessing to each of us. May you endow your speaker with your power Put your words of truth into his heart. And speak to him, God. And give us a word from you tonight. May you bless our hearts, our minds. That we may do the things that please you, God. And I thank you, Father. 
for allowing your will to be done. Not our will, God, but your will be done is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm in now with our scripture reading, the sister Dewey Carey, followed by the introduction of the speaker by Brother Vincent Sims. Good evening, church. Please stand for the scripture reading. The scripture reading is taken from John 6, verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come upon unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? God has already added a blessing to the reading of his holy word. May we see this. It is my happy privilege and pleasure and joy to introduce the speaker tonight. I need no script to introduce him because he is my son. He born at the primitive years of this Berea church journey. Three years after Berea had started a journey, he came along. And unlike Mary and Joseph, if I and his mother were searching for him, we surely would find him with the children, playing with the boys and the girls, not with the seniors, not with the doctors and the lawyers. Because with him, he spake as a child when he was a child, he acted like a child. But he grew up. Even as a child, his mother used to say, boy, God, have a call on your life. And he used to laugh. And I must confess, I used to laugh too. But his mother passed, and he called me a year after his mother passed and said, Daddy, you can't run no more. He answered the call. And so we are proud to say that God has used Berea to groom a pastor. In these 40 years journey, he is now ordained an ordained minister. He pastors two churches, the Ephesus and the Pierdale, some of the Adventist church. But uh, he, like myself, we always say we are Bereans from the noble people. Face made strong to triumph over host of hell, over darkness, sin, and death. My name to bear, and in that name to conquer, so send on that sets the captain free to the of sin to lose this place. The lost to me, so send I you 
my strength to know in weakness, my joy in grief, my perfect peace in pain. My grace I rule eternal fruit to gain. So send I you to bear my cross with patience. And then one day to lay down again. Good evening once again, everyone. It's a pleasure to come in this capacity as Pastor Manasseh Sims on this 40th year anniversary celebration. I stand here as a proud testament of the hard work that has went into building this church into what it is, a, a, a ministry producing church. And that I say to God be the glory. I thank God that 40 years later, the church is still standing strong and its influences can still be felt throughout the length and the breadth of the Bahamas. And by God's grace, until he comes, they will continue to find the Bereans faithful. And so I want to just get into the word for tonight as I pray that God will encourage us to continue to walk through the open doors before us. And so... I invite you to bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Father, we invite your Holy Spirit into this place to tabernacle with us for just a while. May we be transformed from this experience according to the tender mercies, O oh God. Bless us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to preach to you tonight under the subject, doors. Doors. You know, when I was in Eleuthera as a pastor, it was one of the most blissful times in my life. Uh, the island pace is so different from the city. You could just let your hair back if you have hair, and you can relax, and the cool breeze could just take you away. Uh, you get things get done when they get done, and you get there when you get there. And, you know, one of the things about being on the island is uh, you, you have a a sense of safety that you don't have in the city. You know, so much so that uh, people can leave doors unlocked and don't even think about it. You know, one night I had returned home after my journey up and down on the island. And in my haste, I just came in, dropped my supplies down because I was tired through the day. Uh, I fell asleep at the mountain and, you know, I... I, I you know, had a nice sleep. I woke up the next day ready to go on my journey, but something was missing. But a grandma couldn't find my keys, could not find my keys. And I had to be in the bluff, which would have been almost an hour distance away. I was looking high. I was looking low, could not find my keys anywhere until something hit me. Look outside. As I opened the door, I heard the thing thing my key was outside the house all night, and no one touched it. 
This ain't gonna argue. <laughs> you see, there's something about doors. Doors can mark entrances and doors can mark exits. Anytime you have a house that does not have a door, it's not a house, it's actually a prison. When you have something that is valuable, something that is treasurable, you lock it behind a door. You see, doors will keep the owners within and keep the enemies without. And as such, we find ourselves observing the Apostle John in the book of Revelation stuck, as it were, with no door to exit because he had been exiled to the island of Patmos. You see, this banished apostle was suffering and laboring in the prison of circumstances placed upon him. You know, many of us at times, maybe perhaps throughout the 40 years, can relate to the feeling of helplessness and bondage that have been placed upon us because of the circumstances we find ourselves in. You know, after COVID-19, we know what that feels like. After the economy is still trying to recover, many of us still feel as if we're trapped in a prison with no door to escape through. So the question I want to ask us tonight is this. How and where can we experience God during our trials and tribulations to take us through into our future? In the book of Revelation, we find Apostle John writing to the church and he's using symbolic language, colorful language. But inside, it's crafted in such a way that the, it held the answers so desperately needed for tough times. Answers that bring hope in difficult trials. And it's against this backdrop that we notice in the book of Revelation, if we could turn to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 and chapter 4 and verse 1, there are two doors that have been given to us. That's Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 and chapter 4, verse 1. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. So we can see here, if we observe it through our mind's eye, that the door in chapter 3, verse 20 is closed. But if we want to contrast chapter 3, verse 20, then we come over to chapter 4 and verse 1. You can put it on our screen, chapter 4, verse 1, which says, after this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. If we compare these two doors, the door that is on earth, that represents your heart, is closed. Yet the door that's leading to our heavenly Father is open. You see, brothers and sisters, the challenge for us here this evening is that when we go through life, after we've gone through 40 years and we're looking to our future and when people have closed their doors on us, it's not for us to give up because the door that leads to our Father is always open and full of blessings. What do you say? If you have not noticed, it's all about access. It's all about opening doors. For how in the world can we pray for blessings that are in heaven and the door to our heart is closed? It's about access. If we want to add the things that are with God, then that means simply we must open our door. That way God can come in and commune with us and uh, we can sup with him and he with us. But if we notice in that same passage, uh, while we stand at our door, God also stands at his door. We all have treasures and things we want to protect. But when we open our door, there can be direct access between the two parties. So if we want to compare the two passages, we may ask what is behind this door in chapter 3 and verse 20. What's behind this door? We will find that there is a human being behind this door. We're going to find that there's poverty behind this door. We're going to find sickness 
behind this door. We're going to find divorce behind this door. We're going to find loneliness behind this door. Everything else that we can mention that is found in secrecy and privacy is behind this door. People close their door not because they want to do righteousness. They close themselves up, form these little cocoons and these small little prisons far from where the world can see them locked behind this door. The Bible says Jesus stands by our door knocking, saying, open up. There's disaster going on in there. There's hunger happening in there. There are tears happening there. There is loneliness happening in there when people refuse to open their doors. But the Bible says for us, and it's good news, that when we open up, I will come inside, Jesus says. I will eat with you, and you will eat with me. You will have my share, and I will have your share. You will have my stuff, and I will have your stuff also. But when we flip this passage over to chapter 4, and the Bible says in verse 1, After this I look and behold, a door was opened, the passage changes altogether. Because this passage leads to God. And my question is, and the question we should be asking as we look forward, after coming through 40 years, after going through all our tests and trials, as we look towards our future, our question should be, what is behind this door? So let's read it so we don't miss it. We can appreciate what's found there. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was open, standing in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, "What? Come up hither, or come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. So I invite you to journey with me as we walk through the text with John, as he walks through this door. The first thing we're going to find behind this door, open in heaven for us Bereans, as we look forward to the past 40 years, the first thing we're going to discover is our future is behind this door. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, is found behind this door. We know what it says. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and an expected end. So the first thing in verse one, the Bible says, when you open up this door to come up here and you can't miss it, it's high, it's available for us all. Immediately it puts us on a place of height so that we can see that our future is before us when we walk through this door. And so tonight, Bereans, I want to challenge us after 40 years, to walk through this door. What do you say? And the Bible says in verse 2, Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, he says, I was in the Spirit. I was in the Spirit. So that means behind this door, there is the Holy Spirit. Behind the other door, the door that is on earth, the door that represented our hearts, there is influence human influence where people are being led away, being led astray by the things of this world, the things that fulfill the lust of the flesh. But here we find the Bible says, I was in the spirit. Matthew chapter 14 verse 38 tells us, watch ye and pray lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is willing, but the flesh is weak. Brothers and sisters, the only way we were able to make it through 40 years, the only way we're going to be able to make it to our future destiny is we must be in the spirit. It is the spirit that worked both in us to will and to do God's good pleasure. So we got to be in the spirit to be behind this door. I press on. Also, we notice behind this door, we're still in Revelation chapter 4, we, still, we notice that there is a throne behind this door. 
Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, there is a throne behind this door. A throne is a seat of authority. So that means that authority is behind this door. The truth of the matter is, we as human beings, we need to be managed. Man cannot live without the concept of a throne, without the concept of authority. Because if we attempt to do so, we will find that there is a throne that either someone or something else is sitting on it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 reminds us all that we need teaching, we need rebuking, we need correcting and training in righteousness. So behind this door, this door open in heaven, there is authority behind this door. What do you say? Additionally, as we press on, I, wanna, I don't want to keep you here too long, so we're pressing on. The Bible says, I saw one sitting on the throne. We're still in verse 2, still in verse 2. I saw one sitting on the throne. That means someone is present on this throne in heaven. And I want to declare to you tonight that God the Father himself is behind this door. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, the Bible says, Daniel in vision, he says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was as white as snow, and the hair of his head were like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. The presence of God is behind this door. That means that the seat is not empty. It testifies as a declaration of God's rightful claim to rule and to judge. Behind the door on earth, the door that leads to our heart, it is just you and I and the devil sitting around in a chair. But in chapter 4, we find the presence of God behind this door, seated on the throne. And so we have confidence to know behind this heavenly door, God is with us. What do you say? You press on to verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3 goes on and it says in, that, in Revelation chapter 4, He who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby precious stones. So to me, it paints the picture that behind this door open in heaven, there is wealth behind this door. Wealth indeed is behind this door. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 19, it describes the new Jerusalem being garnished with all manners of precious stones, a, a truly luxurious place, the radiance symbolizing wealth and value. That should indicate to us that being in the presence of God not only attracts wisdom, but also attracts wealth. It attracts you to God-given gifts and skills and opportunities available to you. So behind this door, there is wealth to be had. But we must go through that door. Going on in Revelation, we're still in Revelation, we see a, a rainbow, a rainbow, a beautiful, powerful reminder that God will never destroy the earth again by water, but by fire. That reminds me and it draws our attention to the fact that behind this door, there are precious promises from God. Behind this open door, there are precious promises such as Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 that tells us, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Or perhaps another promise that took you through the 40 years in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 that says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And perhaps if that didn't take you far enough, the greatest promise, I believe, that we all hold to found in John chapter 3 and verse 16 that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What do you say, church? 
A throne says I can do whatever I want because I rule. But a promise says to us, I will fulfill this word to you and I cannot do otherwise. And so I praise God. You should praise God that through 40 years we can trust that there are promises behind this door. We press on to verse 4, press on to verse 4, and we notice that there are 24 elders. Maria has how many elders now? I don't, uh, we, we only have a couple of them. <laughs> you have six or so. In behind this door, we find 24 elders, my Lord. But this 24 elders is to take us back to Old Testament picture. First Chronicles chapter 24, where David was assigning the heads of the priests to share in the duties of the temple. But all of this is painting a picture for me, and perhaps you can see it as well, that behind this door in heaven, there is consultation behind this door. Consultation behind this door. We are not alone. Because behind this door, there is God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and all his followers behind this door. Proverbs 11 verse 14 says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Behind the door on earth, that is our heart. It is just us alone to consult with. But when we look to the door open in heaven, there we find godly counsel behind this door. We press on to verse 5. The Bible tells us that there is fire before the throne. Fire before the throne. And that paints the picture for me. That there is warmth in the presence of God behind this door. There's warmth. You see, in this world, we are prone to feel cold, to feel alone, and to feel deserted. We feel this way when people turn their backs on us, when they leave us so isolated and as if we're all alone. Strangely enough, today we have the most advantages to remain connected than ever before, but yet people are reporting feeling the most alone in history. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that there is the presence, the warmth of God and his followers behind this door. That means that we can have the comfort of God and his loved ones with us. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 tells us, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us all in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble, with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. So when we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, when we are behind this door with godly believers and the presence of God is with us, then there is warmth for our hearts behind this door. So if we want to be warm, then we must come through this door. I hasten on, I hasten on in verse 6. In verse 6, Revelation chapter 4, verse 6, uh, John looks and he sees what looks like a sea of glass. A sea of glass. That means when we look at glass and we can see through it, it paints the picture that there is transparency behind this door. Transparency. You see the door that leads to our heart. There is darkness. The lights are off. And it's hard to see our way clearly. But with God, the Bible says in Psalms 119, verse 18, open my eyes that I may see the wonderful things in your law. We cannot see clearly without supernatural help. There are just simply too many ideas, too many commercials, too many sources claiming to be credible for us to trust our own selves. We would not have made it through 40 years if it was just simply us moving based on what we can see. But when we enter in through this door, we not only have access, but we also have transparency in our thoughts and in our actions. I hasten on in verses 7 through 11 as I try to compile it here. Uh, John, as he, he's walking through this heavenly door, 
he, he hears voices and he hears worship going on behind this door. That paints the picture that there is fellowship behind this door. There's fellowship. The living creatures and the 24 elders all come together to worship the Lord Almighty. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 tells us, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Behind this door, there is worship. There is praise with all the saints of God. There is encouragement to be had when we meet together and we talk about the goodness of God. And even though some of us may be comfortable to remain watching on our TV screens and our devices, but nothing will take the place of person-to-person -person fellowship as we seek to worship God together. What do you say? And so, after going through all these sceneries behind this door, let us close the door on chapter 3, verse 20, and listen to the call after 40 years to come up here to this door in chapter 4, verse 1. Because when we come up a bit higher, we can broaden our view of the horizon. When we are on our chair, we can see just as far as the house. But when we are on the roof, we can see just as far as the yards. But when we go to the mountaintop, we can see the horizon. But when we go up in the airplane, we can see the expanse of the skies. But when we are in the clouds, we can see the earth. But from where God is, from where God is seated, when we come up here, we can see the entire universe. And God's call is for us after 40 years is to come up higher so we can have a better view. Not just of ourselves, but of the environments around us. For too long, people are stuck up in smallness, denominational smallness, family smallness, cultural smallness, educational smallness, political smallness, stuck up in small things. But from where God is, there is a vastness of horizons, a vastness of education, of information, of occupation, of financial connections, of spiritual affiliations, all in the presence of God. In the presence of God, our call is not to the small corridors of our lives, but to the heights and the vastness of heaven. So we have all this time we've been talking about the door. The last question I would like to ask you, what is the door? What is the door? Good thing John, who also wrote the Gospel of John, he tells us in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. John 14, 1 through 6. The Bible says, let not your hearts be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. Because in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. And perhaps Thomas was like some of us. A little bit slow sometimes. A little hard to catch it. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Bible tells us, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My brothers and my sisters, we made it through 40 years because Jesus is the door. Jesus alone gives access to the Father. Jesus alone is the door that is always open. He grants us all the blessings we need. And the way he was able to do it was because of his blood. 
It is the blood of Jesus that gives us access. It is the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins. It is the blood that transforms our character. It is the blood that makes me strong when I am weak. It is the blood that has taken us through 40 years because what is impossible for man is possible for the blood. That's why the songwriter to write the words, the blood that Jesus shared for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, ever lose its power. Why? Because it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, from Sunday to Saturday, through 40 years, it will never, ever, ever lose its power. It is the blood of Jesus, my brothers and sisters, that has been with us through these 40 years. It is the blood of Jesus that is extending that invitation for us to come up a bit higher, for us to walk through this open door in heaven. You see, 40 years may have been long, but the journey is not over. It won't be over until we all make it to glory land. But I thank God that even though it's not by my might and it's not by my power, but indeed, by the Spirit of God, we all can make it to the other side. Through 40 years, God has been faithful. Through 40 years, his invitation has still been the same. And so tonight, he is extending that call once again for us all to continue pressing on the upward way. New heights we can gain each and every day. Brothers and sisters, tonight, God is calling us to come up higher. Whoever needs to see the future, if it is our future, best way for us to experience this future, to see it, is for us to be where God is. So tonight, I'm inviting us all to continue to follow the invitation of God. Thanking him for 40 years but praising him for all of the blessings he has in store for us going forward. It won't be over until we're all on the other side. But by the grace of God, there's room for us all to rejoice. There's room for us all to celebrate. There's room for us all to praise God for taking us through these 40 years and taking us to our final destination. May God continue to richly bless you, Berea, as we continue to hold on to his promises, as we look forward to what he will do in our lives. As he continues to work, may we remember the same God who took us from our humble beginnings can take us through to glory. May God continue to richly bless you. And so I invite you to stand with me as we have our closing prayer. We end tonight's service. Our Father and our God, we are grateful. We made it through 40 years only because of your grace and mercy. Thank you for extending that invitation for us all to come up higher. That door that's open in heaven, oh Lord, we are grateful because it is open because of the blood of Jesus. May we all continue to walk, walk with you daily so that you can continue to take Berea to a glorious future. Bless us, we pray. And as we go our separate ways, may we go believing that your presence is always with us. We ask it all in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. And together we say amen and amen.